Welcome back to Issues of Faith. We are talking with the author of a new book, The American Dream in Tennessee, Stories of Faith, Struggle, and Survival. The author, Dr. Manny Sethi, Vanderbilt orthopedic trauma surgeon, who says, who's really talking about the role our faith plays in our health and our recovery. And is this something um, that our healthcare community is talking enough about, in your opinion? Unfortunately, no. I, I think this is something that we really need to talk more about. You know, right now, I think American medicine and medicine in our country is, is incredible, and we can do incredible things. But I think that there is so much more to a patient's life that we haven't thought about and factors that drive outcome and how you do. You know, the, again, the, the very powerful role of faith. And another thing that I, I don't think is, spo is talked about enough is family. In, in my practice, you, you see sometimes folks who have, they just have injuries that are, are, are mind-blowing. And you're, you start to think, well, you know, this is the downslide of this person's life. This is where things are going to go bad. And you just see them do so well. And they, and I think part of that is, you know, obviously faith is we're talking about, but part of that is this very loving family uh, that you that you have, you know, around uh, around a patient, and you see the difference when, for example, you have somebody who ha doesn't really have anybody to, who cares for them. Maybe they have an injury that is not as severe, even something as simple as an ankle fracture, and you see how it just it devastates their life because they just don't have that that support network, you know, and. F as a, as a person, I'll tell you, my father, when I was younger, was very sick. And, uh, and I just remember how much my mother did to help and how supportive we tried to be um, uh, as kids staying in the hospital with him, had to have multiple blood transfusions. You know, and, and I think it's partly there where I pick that up. Uh, and, and learn that power, but just as a doctor now on the ground, I, I see that, you know. And the other thing I would just say is really having a community around folks to help them. Uh, you know, for example, I run this nonprofit called Healthy Tennessee, and we do preventative health outreach across the state. We have developed this really incredible model now where we go to places and it's local communities helping their own folks, screening patients, etc. But I think that power of community and, and, and having a network of people to support you beyond your family, whether that's your church community, whatever that is, I think that is so important. And it gives you an internal strength, you think? It gives people a reason to fight harder? Absolutely. You need, you need that sort of internal desire Absolutely. to heal. Absolutely. And, and you see, I guess, both sides. Absolutely. People that have that and people that don't. That's right. So yeah. with this book, Again, eight cases you highlighted. You talked about one earlier. Is there an example? I'll ask for a couple examples, but let me let me ask: Is there is there an example of somebody maybe who didn't have a lot of faith, then they they found faith because of their injury, and that you feel like made a difference? Yes, absolutely. There is a, a patient in, in the book named Brian, and Brian um, was from West Virginia, and he moved here, and had a lot of problems with drugs and alcohol. Um, was severely injured on the job. He was on a 40-foot roof, uh, and that day they had changed the safety uh, mechanisms, and he was on the roof with his brother, and to save his brother, he actually, uh, they were both about to fall, but he saved his brother, and he fell, and he had just a devastating injury of his, of his leg. Um, and so he came in, he had multiple, mul just a mangled leg, uh, and frankly, we thought he was going to lose it, but he fought back through multiple surgeries. And I would just say, in the beginning of that, you know, his marriage was, was he was having a tough time in his marriage. He he his he, he really hadn't found faith. I think he had been to church when he was a, a younger, but really through this process, you, he found his faith, and you could see that even in the way he talked and the way he spoke over time, you know, saying things to me like, you know, it's God's plan, what happens to me, but he made it through. We saved his leg and through multiple procedures. Today, he's doing very well. He's back on his feet. Uh, his marriage is intact. His family is intact. So I think that, you know, it's, it, it's j faith journeys like that that really um, are incredible. And that's why he, he, I think he did so well, is that he, he really found meaning. And, and I think in general, at times like this, it's, it's hard to, um, 
to find meaning. So, for, you know, in my own uh, my own life, you know, when I lost my father, uh, I was a medical student, and I really it was very hard for me to reconcile what had happened. And when I found my faith again, I really it really helped me through to realize what my purpose was in life, to be a doctor, to come home uh, back to Tennessee and to, to, to make a difference. And I just think that, that having some, you know, something to hold on to is just so important and to, and to, and to, and to keep, keep the faith. And this may be a tough question, and I guess sure. it's more your opinion. Is it a psychological advantage to healing to believe in something greater, or, or do you do you think there are cases where the hand of God comes down and actually heals? I mean, so people would, would be on both sides sure. of that. But what, what, what do you think is at play? I, I mean, I, I think I, I'm a big believer in the hand of God. I, have, I think there are just certain... Jamie Simmons, who I was telling you about earlier, the gentleman who got hit by a van, you know, and had eight, 18... 22 surgeries, you know, and is back now building tour buses. I I just don't think that that's me who who did that. I mean, I played a role, but I also would say that uh, if if you have faith, if you have a loving family, and you have a, a a community that supports you, I think psychologically that does do something. That does that does help you, and and that's important. So I don't think that I think that faith, you know, has I think there are multiple things that faith can do to, to help uh, in, in healing and recovery. But yes, I do also think that there is, there is a higher power. And so you said we don't talk about it enough in our, in our health care system. What, do you, what would you like to see going forward? How could we better talk about it? Can, can hospitals do more? You know, how could we better talk about it? I guess it's tough if, if, you, if you've been hit by a bus yeah. to have someone come in and say, you know, believe in God and you'll, you'll, you'll feel better. I don't know. I, but what do, we, what do we need to do? I think for people who want to talk about it, I think they should be allowed to to, to talk about. Let me, let me give you one example. There was a, a lady when I first, um, I grew up in, in Hillsborough, Tennessee, which is about you know, an hour uh, down the road, and that my parents are immigrants and came here. And uh, So when I first got back, about six months in, there was a patient who was actually a patient of my mother and father's who had gotten injured. And uh, she saw me, she's like, you know, your last name is very familiar. And I was like, oh, you know, and we realized this connection. And I remember she gave me this knitted um, little card that said Jesus on it. It was a green and white. And she asked me, she said, will you just put this in your pocket when you, op when you take me to the operating room today? And, wow. and I still have it. And, and I think that patients should feel more um, able to be able to live their faith when they get injured and to, um, I, I think that, and, and to discuss it. I think we should allow it. I don't think we necessarily have to promote it, but I think that we need to just let people know that that's okay. And I think more holistically, I think we have to, again, start thinking about these things because I just don't think that it's putting plates on broken bones that is going to heal a, a person. I think it's so much more than that. You know, I think it's, again, it's, it's that faith component, their, their, their wife, their husband, their, their kids, um, their mom and dad, you know, the, that community around them. And I think that we really need to start thinking more holistically. And again, after writing this book, I, I will tell you, it is, it is so incredible to see somebody, but then to spend three years with them, and you just you see them as a totally different individual. Now, I'm not saying that you can do that for every person, but to some degree to learn their life stories and who they are and try to help them through understanding that, I think that's very important. I think for some doctors that might be scary yeah. to get to know them too well. Yeah, There's it, just so much at stake, um, but you think that's a helpful, positive thing. I, I think it's, it's a, a, a very... Uh, powerful thing, but it's also a personal thing. You know, in this, this you know, sort of three-year journey I took, I started to think about why did I become a trauma surgeon? Like, why did I, why did I do that? And why do I feel such a connection with these patients? What is it about them, specifically these eight folks? And I think in my own life, it was really, you know, the power of faith, my loving family, and this small community in Hillsborough, Tennessee that kind of gave the, you know, child of two immigrants a, a chance, you know? And, and so I think that it's a personal thing. Uh, 
to, to, to do that, but, but I think to some degree we need to do it more. And that is interesting. I mean, the title of the book, The American Dream in Tennessee, you talk about these eight patients, but you also talk about your life. That's right. Yeah. And how you, how you did become yeah. an orthopedic trauma surgeon. Um, and that's quite a journey. Oh, yes, it is. And yes. now, so I, I guess finish, we have about two minutes left. What, what is, describe that part of this book. Sure. Well, you know, I just sort of talk about my, my family's journey from India. I was born in Ohio, but we came to Tennessee when I was three years old. So, you know, we, I lived in Hillsborough, Tennessee, and really, you know, went to a very small school there and, and w was with folks who, you know, they, they didn't have a lot but they had each other and they really taught me about the power of of community uh, you know the power of family and the power of faith and if it wasn't for this small town I wouldn't be here today and and that's why I called it the American dream in Tennessee I I think that you know what we have in, in this state is is very special is you know is this people helping people and and, and this level of family support and this level of faith, frankly, that I don't think you find other places. That can really help improve people's health and, and chances for recovery. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank Manny you so much. Sethi, Vanderbilt orthopedic trauma surgeon, and his new book, The American Dream in Tennessee, Stories of Faith, Struggle, and Survival. Thank you for being here. Thank all of you for watching Issues of Faith. Have a great day, everybody.